Welcome back to the community channel, everybody, and thank you all for being part of it. If you could please smash that like button and watch the whole video, it helps YouTube share it out to a lot more people who need this and hit that subscribe button. It's free. Okay, today we have another member's self-interview. I sure missed I didn't get any for a few weeks, but Trish came through and did a really great job. She's a great gal. She really is. And if you look down in the description, you'll see that uh, her channel is listed there. And she's been tinkering on one herself, which is really awesome. And she said she used a couple of my videos to help her through, which makes it so worth it. Before we get into that, I did want to say, keep an eye out in the next coming weeks. Uh, Misty from the V-Dub store. I'm sure some of you do know her. If not, you might want to get to know her because she really gives good personal help on parts on the phone and gets her stuff out the same day. And also from MP, they're going to sponsor me on something really, really big. And that video is going to be fun. Heather will be involved. Uh, it's freight shipping. That's how big it is. So that'll be here in the next few weeks. I got a call, get on the phone with her. I might film that even. So sorry about the long-winded stuff there, but uh, it's a great surprise that Misty and MP put together for me and for you folks to see what's available. I think you're going to like it. Uh, we're on the body work right now on the front end still. Uh, that video is coming up too. I'm actually almost done with that one. So let's check Trish out and I'll be right back. Hi Slade, Heather, and fellow community members. My name is Trish Nelson and I am going to do one of these here self-interviews. Um, my background is I'm an elementary school teacher and uh, I have no experience restoring Volkswagens or any other old car for that matter. Um, I do have a lot of experience with woodworking and all the machinery that goes into that. So I have that background and I've been selling all my woodworking machinery to pay for this new hobby of mine, restoring old Volkswagens, Beetles to be exact. And um, so, and I'm videotaping every step of the way. So it's all on YouTube. And uh, I actually feature Slade in episode four and how much I rely on his videos to figure out how to do all this stuff. So we are going to take our two screws out, your volume screw, your mixture screw, you know the deal. Okay. okay. Yep. I know the deal. No, I don't know the deal, but that's okay. okay. So anyway, I'm going to show you what I'm doing. And here you can see my very cute 1971 uh, Super Beetle. When I was 16, I got my first car. It was a 71 Standard Beetle, baby blue. I was the second owner of it. So yeah, it was, um, you know, one of the big regrets I have in life is letting go of that Volkswagen. I've done a lot of things in life that I should regret, but that's the only one I really do regret. And uh, it's so cute. But anyway, I just didn't appreciate it at the time. So, all right, hopefully you enjoy. Okay, so the most recent thing I've done is remove the engine, and uh, that's going to be in episode six, I think. Episode five, I have the, uh, I started the engine for the first time and it started up the first try. It was so exciting. It was like, ah, I can't believe it. I didn't want to run it very long though because um, 
the end play on the uh, pulley is, was a little, it was like six thousandths and uh, out of whack. So I just didn't want to risk it. I'm going to retest that end play again uh, and decide whether or not I should open up the um, case and do the bearings or what. I'll consult the gurus on that. All right, so here's the interior, the door cards and everything's out, but look at this, the plastic on here is still intact. I mean, and there's no rust on the doors, which is amazing. But there is rust on the heater channels, big time, and on the corner panels. So I'll be replacing that, and I have, um, have the parts I'll show you in a second. So I took out all the interior and here's the dash. The headliner is in pretty good shape other than these holes in it. So I'll probably be replacing that too. I keep just trying to figure out how much I want to replace and the more I think about it the more I want to replace. So um, Anyway, and everything's original. The original number on the chassis and the uh, engine and uh, um, the body are all match. So that's pretty cool. There's a little dead mouse over there. Typical stuff. All the electrical works. I tested all that. Same with the other door over there. It doesn't have any rust. The floor pans are in awesome shape. Uh, I looked underneath the car and uh, to make sure, but it's really just the heater channels that need to be replaced, but these floors are solid as get out. I've been standing on them, doing all kinds of stuff in here, and there's not a bit of indication there's anything wrong with the floor pans anywhere, so I'm really lucky about that. Okay, there are the parts for the um, rust replacement. The minimum. I'm sure I'll find other parts that have to be replaced too. And then the trunk. I removed the gas tank, I think in episode two, and it was filled with this rusty sludge. It was really thick. And in fact, the drain plug uh, was so clogged up, I had to peck it uh, open with a, a screwdriver. And it was bad. That's all in episode two, I think. Um, and then, uh, oh, in episode one, when I took out the spare tire, there were live infant mice underneath it. That was fun. Okay. So the next step is to shore up the inside, brace up the inside so I can remove the doors and remove this heater channels and get all that replaced. Pull the car off the chassis obviously too and um, that's pretty much what's happening right now I have my little new welder and getting my tools and everything organized and my new little welding station there's my compressor and if we go in here this is my woman cave this is where uh, I have all my woodworking machines. So I'll show you that in a second. Let me just turn the light on in here. This is my basement. So there used to be a bandsaw right here. That was sold. And you see, I've been like a lover of Volkswagen this forever. Wood, stuff like that. And sanders, I'm gonna keep those because I can use those in this new hobby. There's all the uh, interior seating. It's in good shape as far as the upholstery uh, not being ripped, except for, well, there's two big rips, but it's not like shredded to pieces and gross. Well, it is gross. I don't know what I'm talking about, but you know, it's it's not bad. I can reuse these seats and get, uh, if I get new covers. So that's one of the big uh, rips there. And then there's another rip over there. This is the passenger side. You can see it's all stained with oldness. So uh, I'll be getting new seat covers for that. There's the back seat. And then I have this 
here station for resin casting and mold making, silicone mold making. So I'll probably be selling those things. I'm gonna keep my table saw. I'm working on a um, angle grinder sort of stand so I can cut straight lines without having to think too hard. Parts here that I took out of the trunk. And then I'm sorting some parts in these bins over here. So all that's going to be dedicated to sorting books like the parts. I'm keeping my drill press. I use that. And uh, I made this sander. It's a drum sander and I'm probably going to keep it because I made it and I'm attached to it. But this is going my beautiful dust collection system. I'm keeping my chop saw because that's a very handy tool to have. I'm probably going to get rid of my lathe. I haven't made my mind yet. And let's see, I have some 3D printers and a little makeshift milling machine that I use for just plastic. I have my tunes. And then here's things I'm packaging up to sell. And then all the parts from my Volkswagen body are over here on these shelves. So I'm gonna be pulling those off one by one and seeing if I can salvage them and polish them up and all that stuff. There's some rust on them, obviously, but I mean, really, it's uh, not bad. It could be passive for a very nice patina bug, if I feel like it. Uh, let's see, here's my CNC router. This is the remnants of my scroll saw that I pulled apart and I'm selling, parting out to sell on eBay. You make more money selling this old machine uh, in parts rather than as a whole. And then probably, that's the top of the um, scroll saw there, and it would make a good finishing hammer, I'm thinking. So I might put, you know, keep the base in this and modify it into a planishing hammer. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do that. All right, so that's pretty much the whole of it. I'm not gonna make a long video because there's not a lot to show you other than what I've shown you here. Let me see if I can show you some more rust. So you can see here's some rust on the um, trunk or the engine lid, rust there. There's some dents, but I'm just gonna keep learning how to do this stuff and we'll see how it works out. It's so much fun. I absolutely love doing this stuff. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. And thank you very much, Trish. I really appreciate you taking out the time to do that and share in your new adventure. And I wish you all the luck. Uh, okay. Uh, next week, we're going to finish up uh, some body work on the front end and continue on. I am going to have no choice, as I said before. I'm going to have to start putting two, three videos up a week because the due date is April. I have to have this done for all the car shows coming up this year. And I'm sure you'd like to see it done too. So <laughs> I hope everybody had a really, really nice week. And I'll try to get on live chat Sunday night. I will throw it in the community tab on the channel, the Facebook group, everywhere I can. So you know if I am getting on Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Everybody have a great day.